One of the most powerful features about using JavaScript is leveraging asynchronous code. JavaScript's a little bit different from your normal language like Python, Ruby, or PHP, and that you have this option of using asynchronous code, which can be executed out of band of the normal flow. Now, what does that mean? I wanna show you a quick example in Python to show you what can be done asynchronously in JavaScript. So I'm gonna add a new step to my workflow here. I'm gonna choose the Python app and there's a convenient make an HTTP request example we can choose. And this simply just makes an HTTP request to the Pokemon API and returns the Charizard data. So I'm just going to uh, print, say hi, meaning that, that this line is executing first. We're grabbing the data in the next line and then we can print out the Charizard data with JSON. And in the last line on line number eight, we can see that it's exporting the JSON data as the data from this step. So I'm gonna click test just to show the, how this works. And we can see in the logs, first high was logged, and then you can see the data, data from the Pokemon API about Charizard logged right here in the logs as well. And we can show the exports and see that sure enough, yes, there's Charizard data here as well being exported from the step. Let's recreate this quickly in Node and see how it's different. So I'm going to copy that URL to grab the Charizard data, and then I'm going to select the node step and just run node code quickly here. And I like to use the Axios library for making HTTP calls. I'm going to import it at the top of the step, and then I'm going to just delete these lines here, start with an empty step. The first step was to log the hi statement, and then we're going to make a request to that Pokemon API. We'll store it in the Pokemon variable copy that URL, and then I'm going to export that data as Pokemon. I also wanted to log that data, right? So we can just see it in between before we export it. Now, you'd expect, just like Python, that first we would run the console.log, then we would make the HTTP request to fetch that Pokemon data, log it to the console, and then export it. And it should happen in that order, so you'd think. Let's test it. Well, first off, we see a warning. Code was still running when the step ended. Make sure to await all promises. Hmm, that's interesting. And then we also notice that the Pokemon data is empty, which is really weird. And then we look at our logs, and we could see that hi was logged, but then the next log where we should have logged the Pokemon data, it says promise. The last log here is, saying the same thing that the warning is saying that, hey, the, the, this, this step is still running, but looks like code was still running. So why is that? Well, we actually executed a asynchronous function on line six, where we were making that HTTP request. An HTTP request is an asynchronous function because we're fetching the data on a remote service. We can't control how long that will take, if that service is even up, and a bunch of other factors, like if the internet is down or if the internet is just slow. There are many asynchronous function types in JavaScript, like reading a file. The file could be large, the file could be small, the file could not exist. A bunch of different conditions. So synchronous code runs in order, as you'd expect, but there's asynchronous code to account for the operations that are affected by dynamic conditions. So then why do they return a thing called a promise? Well, a promise means that, yes, this is asynchronous, but I promise I'll return either a success or a failure callback. Now, back in the day, we used to use these callbacks that were fired whenever the asynchronous code was finished. So you would do something like this. We would say, then, after the HTTP request is returned, we could say the response is returned to this callback function, and we could do something with it. So we get console log it here. It's response.data in a Axios request. If there was an error during the HTTP call, we could use this catch method and then log the error. This would effectively log the error for us to see what happened. Let's run it one more time. This doesn't solve our problem because the HTTP request is not blocking the step from executing. So how do we get around this problem? 
Well, luckily for us, modern JavaScript introduced this await operator, and we can use it much more simply than typing out a then or a catch callback. We can just remove all this cruft, and we can just use this keyword await. All await does is tell JavaScript to wait before continuing down the script and executing the later steps. So when we click test this time, we should not see that warning anymore and we should see the appropriate data we'd expect from Axios. Last thing to change here, Axios returns a dot data to, that contains the actual JSON payload. So I'm just going to change the Pokemon, extract the data from the response, log the data, and then also export the data. That should help with this extra error we saw on the test. Great, no more warnings, and we can see that the same exact Pokemon data is available in the export, and our logs also show the Pokemon data in the logs. So await is a way for us to execute asynchronous code as if it was synchronous, just like the traditional languages like Ruby, Python, PHP, etc. I just wanna show you one more nifty way Pipedream handles this for you. Instead of exporting the Pokemon data and using await like we were doing before, instead we can say return. So we can return Axios get, which is a promise, right? Axios will return a promise from, because it's a asynchronous function. And Pipedream is smart enough to realize that it should await for promises returned by your Node.js steps. So although we have a circular return value error, this actually awaited for our data to be done. We're getting the entire Axios response back with the request data and config, et cetera, but we still also have the Pokemon data and we didn't have to worry about using await either. There are other ways you can use asynchronous code in JavaScript, like waiting for many promises to finish at one time, or you can create your own promises on your own asynchronous actions and have Pipedream await for them. That's a more advanced topic, but I wanted to show you why sometimes you'll see that error that says the code has continued running even though Pipedream has finished the step. In future lessons, I'm gonna teach you how to build your own components from scratch. You've already learned all the basics of using the props API, making asynchronous HTTP calls, and exporting data from your steps. Those are the key patterns to learn and using components in Pipedream.